CataractCoach.com, operate on the steep axis if possible. Shifting your decision for your hand comfort, that's for beginners, and you need to move beyond that. So here's our patient. You can see we've got a couple of ink marks there at the 0 180 degree meridian. And there's a little bit of cyclotorsion, which is common. So we like to mark the patient sitting up in the preoperative area. And then, as you know, as they go down to the supine position on your operating room table, there can be a little bit of cyclotorsion here. So we're filling up our eye with our dispersive viscoelastic. We're going to show you the whole cataract case here. It's always fun to watch a complete case. And in this case, I'm going to shift my incision to about the 30 degree meridian. So look at my fixation ring. All those marks are about 30 degrees or one clock hour apart. So we'll make that fake incision there on the steep meridian of 30 degrees. Again, the black marks are zero or 180 degrees. And that's gonna help neutralize any pre-existing astigmatism. So if you're just starting off as a resident, I frequently hear residents say, well, I like to make the incision over here for the comfort of my hand. And I said, let me implore you, if you look at this patient, and this patient has steep axis at about 180, why not benefit the patient by making the incision on that steep axis instead of giving you a few minutes of extra hand comfort during your surgery? So at the beginning of your learning curve, yes, I get it. You want everything lined up. You want to be as comfortable as possible. You want to eliminate those issues with your hand being in a less than ideal position for your beginner's skill set. I get it. But you got to move beyond that. So if you've done at least 100 cataracts, it's okay to just now start making the incision what, in the area that benefits the patient the most. And in this case, it's going to be at 30 degrees. Now, there are other videos you see in cataract where I'll shift my incision even more. I'll sit superior. If the incision needs to be made at 90 degrees, I'll move my hand much more to the side if it needs to be made at 60 degrees. I'll even switch hands and go left-handed if I need to make the incision, say, at 145 degrees. So you don't have to necessarily switch your hands, especially if you're learning um, the beginning of your career. But certainly try your best to operate on the steep bags. It's a good habit to have, especially as you get towards looking at more refractive outcomes for your cases. Or even torque lenses. Let's say you're going to do a torque lens. The patient has a significant degree of astigmatism. Let's say a diopter and a half, and you're going to put a torque lens in. Well, just placing your incision on that steep um, meridian will actually help, as you know, but also if there is a variable response to your incision, it'll just change the magnitude of the astigmatism and not its direction. So placing your incision on some oblique axis, oblique to where the steep or flat meridians are, can really kind of throw things off there. It makes it a little bit less predictable in terms of what refractive astigmatic outcome you'll achieve. So you can, again, you see the, the black ink marks there on the uh, limbal edges. Again, those are made at the pre-op time, and those are about the 0 and 180 degree marks. So capsule bag is nice and clean. We're going to polish this out. But it's very important, especially if you're a U.S.-based surgeon, which is very common out here in the U.S., patients really want a refractive outcome from their cataract surgery. And if you're just learning surgery, great. Keep up those skills. But... Don't forget about the refractive outcome. That's really important. And that refractive outcome is not just spherical in terms of IOL power, but it's also astigmatic. And so you really want to pay attention to that for every case. That's why I always implore you to take pride in your incision, make your incision so good. But also now, yeah, go the next step. Start making the incision in a place where it benefits the patient the most. And don't necessarily just place your incision at some oblique angle because it feels better for your hand for the five minutes you're operating. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Our surgery changes the way the patient sees the world every waking moment forever. Now, if it's a very tough case, you're not worried about a refractive outcome and you're going to be there a while and you need to make an incision over in this area so you can access, you know, whatever you got to do. Fine, go for it. No problem. But I'm talking about your run-of-the-mill routine cases where you're really looking for a very clean refractive outcome. And in those cases, yeah, definitely. Let's help benefit the patient here. And you can see that looks like, a, is that an EDOF lens? Yeah, that's an extended up to focus lens. You see a central beam shaping element right there in the central part of the optic. So this patient in particular, right, you need to help the patient address pre-existing astigmatism. In this case, the patient had about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 diopters at 30 degrees. And just making that phaco incision alone, which is about 2.8 millimeters wide or 275, that's going to have a very nice effect for this patient. And I can confirm this patient 
had a beautiful postdoc course and was quite happy. Thanks for watching.